Indeed, Netherlands has excellent public transport links and the swipe card payment system. The card serves as the official transport payment system that links the metro, bus, throughout the country. To bring the message home, we tested how the bus and train system works in the Netherlands. And so today we want to show you how it works. We begin with the train. That is a, an express train. You have a very nice transport system. There was always a lot of traffic, but the traffic was bad. And the ways were very bad. It was always constricting, always making one half of, of the way, they made it better, and the other half was mm -hmm. good and mm -hmm. stones and things. And we are in a place called Busam and we are traveling to Amsterdam, 27 kilometers away. Our waiting time is 30 minutes, but we have to go over the bridge to the opposite side. And the train is finally here. But first, I have to swipe my OV chip card. Like that. Then, I board. Where should I? Where should I board from? Here. Come with me. Busam is a rich neighborhood, but we are made to understand that the train is the most preferred mode of transport here. They say though it's expensive, it's efficient and time-saving. So we've just left Busam Zuid station. We are headed for Amsterdam. We want to see how efficient this system is. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, we are from Kenya. No, we are from Netherlands. So we are seeing how your system is. Unfortunately, most of the passengers do not speak much of English, and my engagement is limited. Now I don't understand anymore. It is too quick. Oh, English? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we have arrived in Amsterdam Central Station. It looks nice, looks beautiful. People are going downstairs. That is where uh, the, the railway system is interconnected with other modes of transport, for example, uh, buses, trams, and bicycles. So let's go and see how one can move around and where he can go after here. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Five euros. Welcome to Amsterdam City, ladies and gentlemen. Now, with this very card, I'm able to use any mode of transport here in Amsterdam. I can use a tram, I can use a bus, and actually, I can rent a bike using this card. At the central station in Amsterdam, all light rails, buses and the intercity trains converge. The tram system stretches far out into the surrounding suburbs. The same applies to the BRT. Now, the entire Amsterdam city is here. This is the map. If you are going somewhere, you just have to come here Look at the place and the numbers. The numbers will help you to locate if you're using the tram, which tram number to use. If you're using the bus, which bus number to use. Uh, if you're using a taxi, where to get the taxi. And actually some of the places you can visit, they are all here with the numbers um, of the vehicle, the bus, let's say the tram that you can use. I can see there's, for example, museums, theaters, parks quite elaborate and that makes the movement in Amsterdam and most cities in the Kingdom of Netherlands seamlessly 
But the government of Netherlands feels that cycling is the best mode of transport. It has invested heavily in developing a cycling culture in the entire Dutch nation. Every train or bus terminal has a parking bay for bikes and even the railway facility has bikes for renting out. Caroline van der Linden cycles to work on a daily basis. The hassle of shuffling from a train to a bus does not excite her the way cycling does. Uh, for me, it's the most quickest way to get from my home to school for my kids and then back to my work and back to uh, my home again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do for the love of it or it's a law here? Uh, no, it's not a law, but I really love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think most of the Dutch uh, children grew up, grew up with biking. I learned riding a bike when I was three or four. Mm -hmm. And my parents took me uh, on a bike trips. I have a racing bike when I was a young kid. So I grew up with it and I really like it. I like biking in the forest. No, I don't think it's dangerous here because we have bike lanes and lanes for the for the cars and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the transport. Uh, so I don't think it's dangerous. No. So, so the road is designed to cater for all mode of transport. Uh, exactly. Most of the roads have a separate bike lane like this, mm -hmm. and if it's not there, there's a colored strip on the lane that uh, divides the, the lane for cars and for bikes. So it's really clear for the um, cars that that is the bike lane, the colored strip. There are also huge penalties for car drivers who get in an accident with bikes. The bike is always right. And it doesn't matter if the bike pulls out in front of you and you're not expecting him. As a car driver, you have a responsibility to watch out for cycles everywhere. And if you don't watch out for cycles and you have an accident with a cycle, it's your fault. The Netherlands has the world's largest number of cyclists, but it's also the safest place in the world to cycle. That is largely because of the perfect cycling infrastructure that can be found throughout the country. But how did the Dutch get this network of quality cycle path? Some think, including many Dutch themselves, that cycle path have always been there. That is only partly true. Yes, there were some cycle path, but they were entirely different type than today. Narrow or poor surface, dangerous or even absent at junctions or even not connected. And cycle path weren't really necessary. Cyclists outnumbered other traffic by far. But after World War II, the Dutch became wealthy and had to rebuild their country. In 1957 onwards, it led to many more cars on the streets of cities that were not meant for cars. And so buildings were brought down to provide room for cars. Even some of the old cycling culture was removed. City squares were turned into car parks. A new development had huge roads for motorized transport. But this progress came at a terrible cost. Cycling was marginalized and decreased by 6% each year. And 3,300 lives were lost in road accidents in 1971 alone. Over 400 of these deaths were children under the age of 14. That got people on the streets. They protested. They called for safer streets for children, as cyclists and as pedestrians. <laughs> then came the oil crisis that made the then Prime Minister to term it as life-changing. He wanted the people to change their ways and be less dependent on energy. Changes that were possible without a decrease in the quality of life. Policies that encouraged cycling fitted into that picture. The car-free Sundays to save oil were a reminder to people of what cities look like without cars. But the protests continued until the government constructed safe cycle routes. It's about being able to just get on your bike and go. You don't have to wait for a bus, you don't have to wait for a train. It's free. It's good for your health. 